like to invite Professor Jim Haynes, Professor of Environmental Science and Biology at SUNY Brockport. Good afternoon. You hear me okay? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you heard, but I'm sure that the uh, Climate March organizers invited Bill Nye, but he was busy today, so you get me. So I'm an ecologist and an environmental scientist. I've taught at the college level for 40 years, including teaching about human cause, global warming, and climate change. Louder? All right. How's that? All right. Did you know that 97% of climate scientists are certain that global warming and climate change are caused by humans and is real? So my remarks today will focus on two ideas. One, how changing carbon isotope ratios, a lot, prove that burning fossil fuels by humans has caused carbon dioxide levels to rise in the atmosphere. And two, how climate in the Rochester region might change during the rest of the 21st century. So please look at the banner held by two SUNY Brockport students. They'll kind of rotate around here as I talk. The sharply rising curve is the changing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere since the year 1750. During that time, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have risen from 280 to 400 parts per million, and that's the highest level of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere in the past 800,000 years. The sharply falling curve is the decreasing ratio in the atmosphere of heavier carbon-13 atoms to lighter carbon-12 atoms since the year 1750. From the atmosphere, photosynthesis by living plants takes up more carbon dioxide molecules with lighter carbon-12 atoms than it does heavier carbon-13 atoms. Fossil fuels are fossilized plants with the same lower carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio as living plants. Why has the ratio of carbon-13 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere dropped so much in the past 50 years? It's because burning billions of tons of fossil fuels, um, of fossilized plants, uh, each year adds so much carbon-12 rich carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. This is the smoking gun evidence that humans are responsible for rapidly rising carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. No other cause, natural or human, can account for the rapid decrease in the carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio in the atmosphere during many of our lifetimes. Without massive reductions in fossil fuel burning immediately, it is likely that carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere will rise to 450 to 600 parts per million in our children's lifetimes. Such conditions have not existed on the Earth since before our primate ancestors originated nearly 30 million years ago. My second topic, what climate changes are likely to occur in the Rochester region during the rest of this century? Climate scientists have high certainty about the future global warming and climate change, but much less certainty about likely regional changes. Warmer temperatures cause more evaporation and more precipitation, the balance of which determines whether a region becomes wetter or drier. The Rochester region likely will experience more violent storms, lower lake levels, and lower stream flows. A longer growing season, but more need for irrigation. Changing composition of regional plant and animal communities, and colonization by disease-carrying organisms that will bring more Lyme disease, malaria, Zika virus, dengue fever, and more. 
The world, the United States in particular, has waited too long to transition from a fossil fuel economy um, to a renewable energy economy. Had we started two decades ago, we could have avoided much of the civilization disrupting climate change that will now inevitably occur. We have the technology to make the transition to a renewable, non-climate changing economy, but we've never had the political will. Our children, grandchildren, and generations beyond are in for a rough ride due to my generation's political and economic irresponsibility. I'm sorry, but I will continue to do whatever I can to stem the tide during the time left to me.